Hey guys, Holly Dunaway here, four-time world boxing champion, and you know the most common question I get asked is how I got started in boxing, so here is the down low on how I got started. Um, when I was about 18 years old, I had went into this uh, fitness center, not because they had boxing, but uh, it, you know, they had like a sauna and a hot tub and a pool and th there was other things that lured me in. Um, I didn't even know about the boxing gym. But uh, there was this little bitty Asian girl in there um, training. She was like 3-0. and oh. And uh, her trainer saw me and got excited because I'm so little. And um, so they had, uh, they had, you know, hit me up about training me for free and everything. And um, I'm underestimating this girl. This girl's like four foot ten. And, uh, you know, when I met her, I shook her hand and she had the tiniest little hands, you know, which, you know, I'm little too, but, uh, for somebody to be littler than me, it really helps me underestimate her. Um, so yeah, we, uh, I started training two weeks later. I'm in my first pro fight in, uh, Memphis, Tennessee at the New Daisy Theater. They used to have like a running show every, every Tuesday there for, for like, 40 years or something. Anyway, um, so I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm uh, getting my butt kicked, but uh, still feeling like a superstar, you know, because I'm like, I'm uh, when I'm landing shots, I'm clearly the stronger fighter, and the crowd would get on their feet, feet whenever I landed. Um, even though, you know, there was probably never a moment where I was winning the fight, but I did know that that it was for me, and that. You know, that, uh, when they stopped the fight, they stopped the fight in the second, third, second, third round, second round. So, uh, yeah, the, the ref stepped in, you know, thought I was getting hit too much and he stopped the fight. But, uh, you know, up until that point, man, uh, I got humiliated right before that. I got hit with the, in the solar plexus. I didn't even know what a solar plexus was until this fight and uh she hit me there and all the air left my diaphragm and uh i hit the ground this was my only time going down um ever ever you know in uh sparring boxing you know any of it so um so yeah that uh that messed with my ego a little bit i was humiliated and um you know i wanted to get back up but I just needed my, my diaphragm to fill back up with air first. So eventually that happens. I get back up, you know, continue the fight, and I'm still getting hit pretty clean. So they stopped the fight. And, uh, you know, it was... Uh, all right. So I ended up stopping that fight, and, you know, I lost by TKO in the second round. And, you know, it sucked, but at the same time, it was, uh, it let me know this is what I want to do, and I don't want to lose anymore, so you just could not keep me out of the gym after that, and I really dedicated my life to it, and told my parents, like, I'm going to be a world champion, and giving up the, you know, the dream of college and all that, and they just didn't really believe in me the way I did at the moment, but that's okay. They came around, you know. Um... But I just stayed busy. Um, I was fighting every single month after that. And, uh, you know, mostly winning. I think I finished my first year with like a, um, what was it, maybe like a nine and two record. No, no, it was uh, eight and three. Yeah, finished the first year with eight and three record. Then I got to 12 and three, you know, and then we just, you know, kept getting better from there. But it was, it was some on the job training since I didn't have, um, like an amateur career. And I really did like sleep and breathe it. You know, I even married my boxing trainer because, uh, you know, I never got to date or anything growing up and I was just always around him and I just admired his boxing knowledge so much. And, and, uh, so yeah, it was, Maybe not your typical marriage based on like, oh, he loves me <laughs> or any of that, you know, but, uh, but no, I mean, he, he kept me, um, focused at all times and it was, 
Um, it was what I needed. And, you know, I don't, I don't know that I would really change anything about, about my path. Um, so, yeah, I was really dedicating my life to boxing. I was, um, I was working at the gym that I was training at, you know, that fitness center that it all started at. Um, I became a fitness trainer there and, um, you know, I was just working like a few hours a week and teaching boxing on the, on the side. And, uh, yeah, that place was pretty awesome. It was, it was called World Class Fitness <laughs> in Fort Smith. Call her out, guys. No. It was a great place to train, though. And uh, it's where I won, like, my first three world titles until, yeah, about, about four years in, St. Louis started calling me. You know, I, um, I had an opportunity to fight for Rumble Time promotions out in St. Louis. And uh, they were doing regular shows at casinos. And, um, yeah, I went out there. I was going to defend uh, my WIBA world title. So I'm fighting this little uh, like a Japanese girl, Diyama Gucci. And, uh, yeah, so... It was scheduled for ten rounds. We're we're at the Ameristar Casino. I'm at the I'm at the press conference, and um, you know we're uh, I'm talking trash. I usually was uh, very gracious, like um, very sportsmanlike most of my career, um, but in this fight, uh, you know, I just got up on the stage and like I kind of played the cocky, you know, persona. And I was talking about how I was going to knock her out in the eighth round. I was like, if she's still standing there in round number eight, I was like, I'm going to go out there and give it all. I'm not going to stop punching until she's out of there, you know? And I'm staring her right in the eyes as I'm saying this. I'm up on stage, like, staring this girl down. Um, you know, was, I, I had this planned, obviously, you know. I'm not this sleek. So, um, yeah, so I, I get out there. Um, you know, fast forward. Next day, we're having the fight and everything. I'm supposed to be the co-main event because it's my first time fighting for Rumble Time. And uh, the the main event got scared and like snuck out the back door of the casino and got a cab, you know. So I ended up like getting to be the main event after all. So uh, first round, I think I knocked her down like two times. Um, she got she got back up and um, then she was. Uh, you know, she was scrapping for some rounds. I, I knocked her down like one other time and this girl is just bleeding like from every orifice, you know, and um, I did have a little bit of a killer instinct back then to where if you see blood, that's that's where you need to aim. You know, I mean, that, that sounds a little bad now and I'm not really in it, but um, but yeah, you know, I'm trying to get the stoppage. So uh so I mean, she had a pretty tough seventh round, but then um, <laughs> she quit on the stool before the eighth round. She didn't come out. They, uh, they rang the bell for the eighth round to come out, and she just, like, shook her head no. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think that, like, getting her head at the press conference was genius because, uh, yeah, it, it, it worked. Uh, I guess I would have had to, like, go out there and really exhaust myself that next round if it you know, if it hadn't went that way. But, um, you know, St. Louis really, like, accepted me and uh, and made me feel like home there. So uh, they asked me if I wanted to, like, sign, you know, sign with them as my, my home promoter. So, you know, of course, I'm, like, done. So um, I pack up, move to St. Louis. And, you know, I make it sound so easy. My, my boxing trainer's like, yeah, I'm not leaving. So, you know, there goes, there goes divorce number one. <laughs> if you're going to fully get to know me here. So anyway, um, I moved to St. Louis. The, this boxing promoter kept me so busy and just, you know, put me in great fights. And they really cared about me, you know. And it's that's important to have as a pro fighter, a, a promoter that, like, is just going to put you in the best situation. Um, always look, have your back. You know, that, that meant a lot. So, um, 
Yeah, I stayed, I stayed signed with them for some years. And um, I had even moved to Vegas, but I was still signed with them. And I'd still come back and, and fight on their shows. And uh, I really loved living in Vegas. That, that was cool. I, I used to train out at Richard Stills Boxing Gym out in North Las Vegas. And you, you get to see, like, a bunch of celebrities come out there and, and you know, train in the boxing gym. And the gyms are really nice out in Vegas, too. I just, I love the mountains out there. And that would, that would really get your, your lungs ready for, like, altitude training, you know. Um, you'd be, like, running as hard as you can. And then, like, you'd look down and you'd realize you're not moving, <laughs> you know, because you're running up a mountain and you're, like, you're... You're just not going anywhere, but you're putting in, you know, you're exhausted and your lungs are working overtime. And, uh, yeah, but it was to the point of exhaustion where you're just not going anywhere. But that's, that's where, you know, you're getting the work in, you know. I remember I used to have a trainer. He would make me wear this 20-pound weighted vest and, like, he, uh, he would make me, like, sprint up hills. And I had, uh, you know, this team of, like, amateur teenage boys that were always around me because, um, you know, I'm the, I'm the size of like a teenage boy. So, uh, you know, and then having somebody like that similar to you right beside you, it pushes you even harder. And so, you know, I, like I could beat these boys on like, you know, doing line drills and stuff. I was always faster. Um, but yeah, you put that weighted vest on me and everybody's faster than me. So, um, yeah, it messed with my pride a little bit, but, but some of the kids, you know, they, they really want to see me do well and they get behind me and just scream, you know, <laughs> push me to go faster. And I, you know, man, the running hills, that's where it's at right there. You can get a workout in in two minutes and be done for the day. Yeah. <sighs> I really love living in Vegas too. I like doing my road work out there. It's just so pretty. I love the the tropical vibe and the um, you know nice weather, palm trees everywhere. Oh, but uh, yeah, it was just really expensive out there, and I wanted to open my own boxing gym. So you know, I had left Vegas and went and opened my own boxing gym. Had had a little amateur team, you know. And uh, yeah, my amateur team, they, they, were, they were pretty unstoppable. But I, I had, um, let me rewind it back to Vegas. So my, my fights had slowed down a little bit in Vegas. And I was only fighting, you know, like two, three times a year out there. And, uh, you know, so I, I got into modeling. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm like little bitty. I don't, I don't think I'm tall enough to do fashion or runway or any of that, you know. Um, I can do, of course, fitness modeling, which, which I did. And uh, anyway, I was just like, yeah, I'm kind of a free bird anyway. Let me, let me try and uh, take my clothes off for like a major magazine, you know, and see if I could get in. So I did a little test shoot for, um, for Penthouse. And, uh, and I got in the magazine. I did like a 10-page spread. My first time ever getting naked, you know. It was like two photographers shooting me, like spread eagle, like hello world. And uh, you know, it was boxing theme. It was tasteful and everything. As tasteful as full nude spread eagle can get. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a double, double issue. And um, you know, it really like kind of helped my boxing career a little bit, you know? Um, so uh, actually I think it landed me a promoter in Mexico one time. Cause he was like, oh yeah, maybe we'll sign you. And I handed him the magazine and he was like, yeah, I think we should sign. <laughs> so just saying, it opened some doors for me. But I said all that to say when I had my own amateur team, it, it, uh, it really like kind of hurt me because, um, you know, the head of the ABC at the time in Arkansas was a very religious man. And he was like saying like, he wasn't going to approve my amateur um, trainer's license because of I was in a porno magazine. I was like, no, I have nobody touching me. I wasn't even touching me. You know, I'm just naked. Like, it's, I was in a boxing gym, you know. He, he wasn't trying to hear none of that. So I couldn't even work my own fighter's corners, you know. I, I was, like, back there holding the camera. 
I would warm them up and, you know, I was still coaching from the sidelines because as in, in the amateurs, you're not supposed to coach from the sidelines. And uh, if you're the trainer, <laughs> otherwise you're just an audience member, you can do what you want. So that, that was good. At least I got to coach them during the match and warm them up and record their fights and stuff. But I had to have my other two trainers in there working corners, you know, so it was, it was kind of like the first time I ever had to pay the price for, you know, taking my clothes off, whatever, I, you know, <laughs> doing, doing the nudie magazine. But uh, to my knowledge, that's the only time it's ever bit me in the butt. Um, but who knows how many opportunities I missed out on that, you know, maybe didn't even come my way that would have if they hadn't seen me looking hot naked. <laughs> so ran the amateur gym for, for a while, training people. And it was a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. I was, I was 25 and, you know, I was still boxing professionally. It's tough to train people all day long. And then, you know, like feel like doing road work and conditioning and boxing. Like you got to separate that. You have to, you got to split it up into like two to three workouts every day. That way you can give a hundred percent at everything. So, um, yeah, I guess I could pay attention to my shadow boxing a little bit here. Huh? <laughs> Quit running my mouth so much. So yeah, you gotta, you gotta really like split up your run and take like a couple hour break and eat something and really relax. And then then you can do your boxing workout and then at late at night or something, you can just focus on conditioning. You know, you don't want to do any like weights as a boxer because that'll destroy your flexibility. You need to be able to like stretch those things out of there, suck it, you know, <laughs> that way you can get a couple extra reaches, uh, inches of reach. So you're doing a lot of like plyometrics, you know, push ups and um, jumping push ups and jumping onto blocks, doing push ups and pulling your own body weight. <laughs> there goes my mic. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, um, you know, I'm going to keep you guys updated every day. I've got hollydunaway.com going and I update on YouTube every day. So just check back in, you know, maybe you can shadow box with me or do some abs, work out with me, or just listen to me rant. All right. Wow.